<laughs> so today we're gonna up plant some sage. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get to it. America 5288 and today we're going to make chorizo and eggs um, with a homemade tortilla corn tortilla Cort I like corn tortilla better I think they taste better and they're better for you although we're gonna use flour so the ingredients for the tortilla we're gonna start off with the tortilla because that's the thing that has to rest first is some cornmeal <clears throat> flour bacon powder, salt, and I need a little bit of olive oil. I'll get that in a second. Here's olive oil. Thought I had everything out. So I have my bowl here. And we're making it for a week, right? So we want to make about eight tortillas, seven or eight tortillas. I have my press right here. We'll move that out of the way because it's, you know, I don't need it right now. So the first thing we're going to do is our dry ingredients. We're going to, I have a haze on me. I'm going to bring it down so you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cup of cornmeal. You know me, I'm not gonna level it off anything. I'm just gonna put that cup in there. That's done. <clears throat> I'm going to put a cup of flour. I don't wanna use the same one because I don't want my flour to taste like cornmeal. This is one third, so I'm gonna put three of these. One cup of flour. One teaspoon of <clears throat> one teaspoon of baking powder. Woohoo! And a half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna mix up all the dry ingredients, get them out of the way. Got my dirty dishes here, and I don't need this yet. Okay, I'm going to get some water, about a cup of water. Because we didn't scale this, we are going to eyeball, and I do mean eyeball. Let me bring you back up. Okay, because we didn't scale this, we're going to eyeball how much water we're going to put in there. Plus, we need to put about a tablespoon of olive oil in here. So let me go ahead and do that. Doing the gangsta lean and putting this thing in here. <laughs> the gangsta lean, you know what? Yeah, one teaspoon should be enough, I think. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. You know what? I'm gonna put two teaspoons just for good measure. That's that should be enough. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Jamaica. Put a tablespoon. That'll be fine. This is rustic, so. It's okay. I'm gonna put some water in here. I'm gonna mix this up. Got to be more careful. It's okay. I doubled the recipe, so it's fine. If it'll be fine, <laughs> it'll be just 
just fine. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Put some more water in here. So after a while, it's going to get to the point where I'm going to have to use my hands. Because this is a hard dough, or a medium hard dough. So I'm just going to try to incorporate everything in here. <clears throat> I ran out of masa, and I was like, you know what? How did they make it in Mexico? I know they didn't buy masa back then. I mean, back in the day, they had to do it the old fashioned way, including in grinding the corn. I'm lucky I have to grind the corn. And I could have done flour tortillas, but I don't particularly like flour tortillas. I like corn tortillas better. You could do more with them. You could make tortilla chips out of them, all kind of stuff. And they taste better to me, so. Just a preference. Corn tortillas, I think, are better for you. Don't quote me, though. <laughs> you do have flour in there. It's equal parts, so. All right. We're getting this dough together. I'm short, so I'm standing on my tippy toes kneading. I always have to stand on my tippy toes to knead dough. Always. You want to make sure you get this stuff incorporated. You don't want to need... <clears throat> Any um, flour bits or straying tortilla, you know, straying uh, corn that hasn't been incorporated with any flour. All right, I'm getting a soft dough. You need to no knead this for about five to ten minutes. You see it's lightly sticky. I'm getting a little bit of corn on my hand. The more you need this, the more the, um, the corn is going to suck in some of the moisture. We're going to let this rest for about, I say, 20 minutes before we use it. So that'll give me a chance to clean up this mess I just made. So I'm going to roll it out, right? Get all my dishes in one spot. All right, I'm gonna roll it out. Roll it out, Jamaica. Trying to make a cylinder. I want it to um, rise. in the um, size that it's going to be. So I want it to rise as a cohesive unit, not as a cohesive unit, but as a, um, as a ball and individual, individual balls. So I'm going to make eight balls. There we are. Love it when a plan comes together. And those individual balls are what I'm gonna let rest on their own, all by them lonesome. All by their lonesome, not all by them lonesome. I sound like a two year old, don't I? Him did it. <laughs> Him no like me. <laughs> so, getting my um, rolls together. I'm gonna let this sit. Let them sit covered for about 20 minutes. I'll see y'all in 20 minutes, all right? Okay, so now I have this covered. All right, we're gonna sit this aside, let it do its thing. We're gonna get some potatoes out. All right, so I have a bowl of water out and I'm gonna skin some potatoes. I'm gonna skin about six of them. It's 
one. And after they're all skinned, go ahead and grate them. In the interest of time, we're gonna speed this thing up. Get ready, set, go! So I'm gonna dump out the water I had the potatoes in. And I'll put the grated potatoes into a strainer. We need to get as much water out of these grated potatoes as possible. And the stuff that comes out the bottom of the potato is called potato starch. You ever wonder where that came from? My neighbor must be out. Dogs don't like it. Don't like it. It's funny how they could hear him come out. <laughs> Don't like him. All right. I got most of the water out of this one, this pile. Move this over. Move it over. Move it over. Put that pile there. Take this. This wetness <laughs> off the board. Squeeze it. Get the, get as much. I'm squeezing it with my hand. I'm trying to get as much of the moisture out of this thing as possible. Let's just keep on squeezing it. Here we go. All right. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. All right. All right, and quickly, before this stuff has a ch chance to brown, I'm gonna cut up some onion. All right, so we have our pot hot. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our potatoes in there. a wooden spatula and move them around. Add a little bit of salt and pepper. And I like to add a little bit of adobo, if I can find it. Found it. <laughs> Just a little bit. Maybe a quarter teaspoon.
got some habanero here and a little bit of onion left. I'm gonna take the rest of this onion and put it in the pot. Take this habanero and chop it up. This is the smallest habanero I had out in the refrigerator from the garden. If you have children, I suggest that you not, you not put habanero in there. But I like hot stuff, so I put it in. Hot thing, hot thing, barely 21. Y'all remember Prince? Back when he had an afro, I think. I want this thing to look like dust when I'm done. There it is, right onto the top of the knife. Follow me guys, follow me. Right on top with the potatoes. Don't mind this, this is rice for another dish. <laughs> Let me get them out of here before they burn up. Bun, bun up. On to the tortillas. This is a tortilla press. You don't necessarily have to have that. If you don't, just press a plate in a plate. I got this because I'm in Texas and they have this available and I'm gonna use it. <laughs> So my pan is piping hot, right? Pull out one of my balls, my tortilla balls. I forget one thing, parchment paper. This is how I get it off easily. Let me turn this down, this is way too high. So I take one piece of parchment paper, and that's way too big, I'm gonna cut this in half. It's enough for four. strangers in the night <laughs> keep on humming it all right there we are i've got my parchment paper there take two take two of the parchment paper problem put some flour on here some flour on these pat it down put the parchment paper on here squeeze it down turn it squeeze it down again hopefully we get it off this time here we are, voila, perfect tortilla. Stick it in the pan. Let's brown it up. Get some more flour. I might as well bring this over here. Put some, a little bit of flour on my hand. Take the parchment paper. Cover the ball with a little bit of flour as well as the parchment paper. Let me dust the rest of them. Can y'all see? So here's my press, here's my ball. Put that on there. And look at that. My tortilla is starting to bubble up. That is the that is a good sign. That's what they're supposed to do. So I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna press it one more time. Open the parchment paper up. Get the tortilla off. Best as I can. Patience, Jamerica. Patience, girl. Here we are. Here's my second tortilla. It's not as pretty as the first one. Move that one over. Spread this. So you can see that these are charred, right? Look at that. That's what I want it to look like. Plate and plate. Cover it back. Still with me, but I got my last two tortillas in here. All right. Waiting for them to get brown. Then we'll move on to the chorizo and egg, and we're pretty much done after that. Okay, and we're pulling our last two. Brown enough for me. That is a good deal right there. And these are sweating. And you know what? 
that's exactly what I want them to do. I want to, I want them to um, remain soft. I don't want them to get hard. And the only way I'm going to do that is allowing them to sweat. So I'm going to wash out this pot and we're going to go into our chorizo. A little bit of over a pound of chorizo and butcher paper. And I thought it was defrosted. I might be wrong. But we want our chorizo to lay out. We want you, it's gonna be red, but we want it to be, we want it to be fried up. All right, I have a bowl of eggs here. This is the same uh, bowl I used for the, um, for the potatoes. I'm using about eight eggs. We want about the same amount of eggs as we have chorizo. And I have a little bit over a pound of chorizo in there. What I want is a little bit over a pound or about a pound of eggs. I'm gonna throw these in my front yard to fertilize the, uh, the stuff. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna break these up a little bit. Wash my hands again. Move the chorizo around. The chorizo is not going to turn brown. It's going to remain red. Out, Chico. But you'll be able to see the consistency change. It'll look like um, hamburger meat, red hamburger meat. But it'll be red hamburger meat that is looks like it's cooked. Well, it don't look like it's cooked. The texture makes it look. Now that the tree so is almost cooked, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit, and I am going to take my scissors, and I got some green onions here, and snip that on there. Beautiful. I just want you to know. Uh oh. Just want some color. Color, I tell you, color. I'm gonna move that around. I'm gonna put some water into the eggs. About, I say a quarter cup. Move that around. Turn your flame down. I turned it down to two. Now it's really low. Wait for this thing to simmer down a little bit because I don't want no issues with this egg. Mix it up. Put the egg in there. The egg is going to balance out the chorizo. The chorizo has a lot of flavor in it. And the egg is going to bring that down to a beautiful taste. And I have it down to low. It's low. It's like number two low. Super low. All we're trying to do is get the egg cooked. We don't want it to burn. And we don't want it to dry out. All right, and so it's the next day, and I have everything pre-prepared. I have my hash browns here. I have my chorizo and egg right here. And I have my pseudo tortillas. They taste more like um, pita. But I have them here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it kind of like a gorta. 
If everybody knows what a gorta is, it's basically a fried tortilla. Um, it's kind of crunchy. And we're gonna put the chorizo and egg and the and the um, hash browns on top. But first, we're gonna refry, refry our pita or tortilla. It's more like a pita. It tastes more like a pita for those of you who are Spanish. I'll be like, that is not a tortilla. Is you're right. So we're gonna we have our heat already up here. I have to get this super hot because I want to fry this and make it make it taste like a crunchy tortilla or a crunchy piece of pita. That's what this is gonna be. So once this warms up, super okay, hot. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to fry, refry this homemade pita slash tortilla. I already heated this pot up. I'm gonna make sure, yeah, it's sizzling. Fry it, fry it down, look at that. Look at that, I'm frying it. That's what you need to do. While we're doing that, I'm gonna take a small frying pan. Woo, this thing's already hot. Take a small frying pan, turn on our small eye. And we are going to get a spoon. Put some hash browns on the bottom. All we're doing is warming this thing up. And this I need to turn down. Let's look at this, it's getting crispy already. Flip it over, let it fry on the other side. Okay, we have our hash browns here. Get you straight. And I don't want too much hash brown, I just want a little bit. Got that done. We're gonna take our chorizo, which is the star of the show. Chorizo and egg. All we're doing is warming up now. that on top I fried a little bit of homemade bacon put that on there cheese Time to pull this out. This is done. Put your tortilla to the side so that it can finish draining off the grease. Put a little bit of water in there to warm it up so it doesn't burn. Keep it on about low, medium. Put a cover on it. We're gonna let this thing steam. Our shell is right here, okay? We don't want that to steam, we want that to be crispy. So I'm gonna wait, give it about five minutes and I'll be right back. All right, it's been about two, three, I don't know, four minutes. Cheese is melted. And it looks like it's done. So I'm gonna turn the flame off. I have my refried homemade pita slash tortilla. Flatbread. I'm going to call it a flatbread. <laughs> and I'm going to take this off. Make sure everything's heated. And I'm going to scoop it out of this thing as gently as possible. Okay, here we go. So, let's see. How am I going to do this? This thing is crunchy, okay. So I'm just gonna pick it up. We'll be rustic here, okay? <laughs> mm. 
tongue now. It's good. Mmm. Very good. I don't, I don't need the bread. It's good all by itself. It don't, it doesn't need the tortilla. It is smoky. I, I like the chorizo with the potato. The bread is okay, um, if you like bread. This is good. So, that's another one. This is better than any restaurant chorizo and egg that I've ever had anywhere here in Texas or anywhere else for that matter. It's not the traditional. It's my way, but it's good. If you like a little bit of heat, it's just a little bit of heat and then it's a little bit smoky. It's good. And then if you wanna bring the flavor down, eat a little bit of bread. The bread is crunchy. So, you wanna try this out? I recommend it. It's balanced. The cheese, and I put a little bit of bacon on it, but I didn't get any bacon yet. The cheese just balances out, and I use cheddar cheese <clears throat> for the top. But I don't taste the cheese. I just taste the chorizo, the pep the peppers, the the um the potato, the chorizo, the peppers, and a little a smidge of the habanero. Anyway. I love it. <laughs> I give this, and I'm very critical. I give this about an eight and a half out of 10. Most people would have gave it a 10 though. Most people. The bread, mm, I, don't, I don't care for the bread. But I'm not, not a tortilla person. When I first came to, to uh, Texas, I had a problem with eating tortillas. They indoctrinated me. Now I'll eat them. But I always have bread <laughs> or make bread. So this is Jamaica 5288. This is my version of chorizo con huevos with papas, which is chorizo with egg and potato. And of course, my flatbread. You all take care, and I will see you on the next one. <laughs> Bye. Man, this is good. <laughs> I hope I wasn't eating like, like I've been starving myself on TV. Y'all tell me, right? <laughs>